screencast on how to do a line graph using Google Spreadsheet. Now, one of the tools that you'll need is the after school training toolkit, um, which is the checklist for a line graph. And it has a variety of different um, things that you'll need to go through and make sure are done after you finish your um, graph. Now, we'll discuss all these individually in class. So you should be familiar with those. So now I'm just going to just apply this to what we're going to do with the data that you collected the other day in your Exploring Light lab. We'll close these. Okay. Um, so let's go to um, the data that you're going to be looking at. You are going to be dealing with some graph uh, some data that's going to look like this. This is a data table here. Notice this is your independent variable, the distance from the paper, and then your dependent variable was the diameter of the light beam. Notice both of them are, were measured in centimeters. And then over here you have your average, and this is what we'd call our raw data here. You wouldn't be graphing all of this raw data. You'll just be graphing the averages from the class. So in order to do a graph, you need to come up here, hit the More button, and go to the icon that looks like a graph that says Insert Chart. We'll click on that, and it's going to come up with um, something that may not look uh, too uh, exciting. But you're going to want to select the data range that you want to graph. So we're going to click on this, and we always put the independent variable on the x-axis. That's something that we'll talk about and, learn, and you'll definitely know by the uh, really soon. So this is what I want to put on, in my X column, this data right here. So it's asking me, what data do I want to put there? Well, I click on it and I drag it down and notice that it changed this. It took cells B3 all the way through B9 and it's going to put that into my graph. So that's good. We've told it that. Now we need to do our y-axis. So we add another range. I'll move this up a little bit so you can see it better. And now remember, we're the, the dependent variable is this data over here, the average. So we'll come over here and we say, well, we want to graph this data right here. And we hit OK. And it's going to come in. That information is now saved up here in the uh, software. So what we want to do now is go through and pick the kind of graph that we want to um, use. So in this case, we want to come down here and we're going to use a scatter graph. And when we select the scatter graph, all of a sudden something will come up that starts to look like a graph that you guys have dealt with. Now, I know we did not pick line graph. We could have, all right, if I picked line graph, um, I'd need to click this button here, this use column B as labels, and then it comes out to what we want. Um, but uh, we're going to use, it's a line graph, but we're going to use a scatter graph uh, for this data because I think it just kind of works out a little bit better, and it just plots the points, and we'll do a line of best fit, which we'll talk about. Um, anyway, so I now have this set up. Uh, and I can now go into customizing my data. What's neat is if I go to any of these points, it gives me my X and Y coordinates, 10 and 12.5, 20 and 22.91, which is the data that you just got from your uh, data table. So let's go in and customize this. And we need to give it a title. Whenever we give something a title, um, it's always best to use the title we'd use in an experiment. So it would be the effect of the IV on the DV. So in this case, the effect of the distance on the uh, beam, light beam, whoops, diameter. That's what we're graphing. All right. So that then goes up here. Uh, that's a little big, um, so maybe I'll drop it down to 14, uh, and that looks a little bit better where it fits over there. Now, uh, I don't want a legend. Whenever you just have one line in a data table, there's no need for a legend. This is for multiple lines, so I'm going to click that I want none. That goes away. 
Um, now I need to label my X and Y axis. So here we go, axes, horizontal. This is going to be, remember, the independent variable, and the independent variable, we're deciding to f choose the distance from the paper. So this is basically just distance. And you always put your units in parentheses that you're measuring with. So we've now done that distance, and we measured in centimeters. We hit return, and lo and behold, it shows up down there. Now, to get to the vertical axis, you just click the vertical. This is going to be the dependent variable. And we said that that was the diameter of light beam. All right, and once again, what units did we use to measure that? We used centimeters, and we always put them in parentheses. Bam, hit return, and now that's taken care of. So we're getting a nice looking graph at this point. Okay, now, um, <coughs> excuse me. The, uh, as we move down, there's other options that you could use if you wanted to make things look uh, a little bit nicer or play with it a little bit. Um, you're more than welcome to. Um, but for the most part, this looks pretty good. Um, so now I'm going to come down to the this interesting part here, this trend line. And a trend line is also known as a line of best fit. And what the computer is going to do is it's going to mathematically find the best line that travels through all of these points. This is a straight line. You can tell that when you look at this pattern, it's linear. So you're going to click on trend line. Since it's linear, you're going to cl click linear. We'll talk about exponential and polynomial when we have that kind of data. We'll click on linear and look at that. It does a um, line of best fit. Notice that it doesn't necessarily connect the dots. All right, It takes one straight line and runs it through all the points. Now what's neat about this, and we'll discuss this more, it also gives you uh, the y equals mx plus b. Right? It gives you, and I can't point to it or it goes away, um, but you can see y equals 0 0.949 times x plus 3.298. Um, so you could input the number 40, like 40 centimeters, in for x, do the calculation, and it would spit out the uh, about 45 where it here is here on the graph, which is a pretty cool um Deal. Well, we've basically finished our graph, um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to um, enter it, if I can remember how to do that. Um, ah, there it was. <laughs> we're going to insert it. <clears throat> now, what I like to do, I don't like it covering up all our data, and it doesn't look that nice, so when, once you've inserted it, you can right click it and whoops right up here sorry click right here at this little down arrow and you're gonna move it to its own sheet you click on that and it's gonna come up with its own sheet and now what you'll be able to do alright is you can go to sheet one down at the bottom of your spreadsheet and that will show you your data and then you can click on chart two and that will show you your graph now, it would be a good idea at this point, right, to go into your line graph checklist and go through and make sure that you did all of those things that you were asked to do. Um, notice things like, is the best fit line or best fit curve drawn? Well, yeah, that sure is. You did a trend line. Um, is a key used if applicable? Well, no, there's not one because uh, we didn't need one. So those types of things go through, take a check, look at them, and you should have a nice uh, setup. Uh, one last thing uh, for this assignment, I'm probably going to ask you um, to turn it in online. So once you have create finished your graph and it's ready to go, make sure you go back to Google Classroom and hit the turn in button and it will electronically turn in this data and everything to me. All right, well, uh, there's your first graph. Should be, uh, we'll have lots more in the future and you should be an expert pretty soon.